It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, man, John from Fort Worth, Texas. I just wanted to take a minute and say Mayhem Miller is killing it. He's doing an awesome job. Um, keep it up, man. Get it on. Bye. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. I concur. Mayhem. God bless. We got news. I got other I got other stuff to complain Take about. Take that, Miss De Silva. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, she said you never go anywhere. Yeah, she said I'm never going anywhere. I'll never read the news. And here mm. I am reading the news. Mm. Hey, the first piece of news is a irate sheriff calls for backup after Burger King messes up his order and squad cars show up with sirens blazing. This is a weird. There's a, uh, is there a thing? I, do Americans feel like they have a God-given right to fast food? <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've, I got to see another video of the McDonald's employee going, sorry, we're out of fries, and the person going over the counter to physically assault yes. them. Like, sometimes you don't get fast food all the time and how you want it exactly. Do you, You're not— I'm telling you, it's the it's original not a, drug. It's the it original is. It's drug. It's not a God-given right, though. I know, but salt, fat, sugar, like oh, something man. happens. It's like the real crack cocaine is right there at McDonald's or Burger King in this case. But no, it's true. This is the case of like Uber Karen with a pistol and a badge. You know how you can tell where the real addiction is? <laughs> tell me. Like, here's where you can tell. Yeah. The real, you can find the real addiction at the airport. <laughs> yeah. And the reason I say that, listen, Mayhem, I'm going to drop some truth bombs. All on right, you. hit it. You clear security and you walk in past security and now you're just in this sort of food court till you get to your terminal, right? Yeah. And it's like eight, you know, seven forty five in the morning. A lot of people are tired, didn't get a full night, slept in a hotel or whatever. People are vulnerable and they're like at their weakest, right? You draw you walk through there, you will see no line at the Healthy Choices Snack Hut. You know, yeah. we got salads. We got we got sandwiches made with whole grain bread yeah. and fresh uh, turkey. And whatever. There's, no, there's no waiting at the place <laughs> that's selling the bananas and the oranges or whatever. Yeah. You turn the corner and you see the Taco Bell and there's fucking 200 people yeah. at 745 in the morning trying to get their hands on some Taco Bell. And... You look across, and there's a Starbucks, and there's 18 people waiting in line to get a fucking coffee. Oh, yeah. That's the addiction. That's how you know, because if, if people are sort of lukewarm on fast food or on coffee, if it wasn't like a drug, you wouldn't see the 8 a.m. airport crowd just wait. You go, fuck that. There's 32 people in line. I'm not going to wait 30, a line for an hour to get a shit Shit burrito? Yeah. No, no. It's addiction, man. Yeah, no carrot box addiction around. I always feel bad at the poor guy. Well, maybe I shouldn't feel bad. The guy who does the healthy healthy hut kiosk, like across from the Taco Bell, Yeah, it's got whole grain wraps and fresh yeah. produce yeah. and carrot sticks. That, that guy just fucking drives a boat. Sad abuse. That guy's just sitting yeah. there on his phone the entire day. He never <laughs> lifts a finger. There's no line. There's no There's no lunch Hustle, yeah. there's no morning hustle, there's nothing. That guy just sits there. <laughs> That's the gig you want. We, we have footage of this oh, okay. uh, incident, but it, it's like, I'm going to just warn you, it's kind of cringe and not super exciting. It's mm -hmm. it's more like, what the hell? All right. Hey, man. Hey, do me a favor. I need to get, all I need is the owner name or whoever owns this damn facility, other manager. We ordered something, food was wrong. We said, hey, can we fix it right? The guy said, well, we ordered. I said, that's not what we ordered. What are we doing? I said, well, can I get my number? I said, well, can you give me a manager name or so I can call that's that's that number? That's all I need. Okay. Uh, I don't need no damn money back no more. I just need to find out who owns this place so I can do a physical plan to the plan. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, he's got a canine in there? Yeah, I got a canine. Oh, wow. He wants the name of the manager or the owner so he can file a complaint. That's all. <laughs> Cops are getting too husky, too. Man. They're eating too much fast food. <laughs> all you got to do to get away from the cops is take a jog. I know, really. Yeah. I'm getting all the names I can. He's on the clock right now, by the way. Yes. The liquor store across the street's being robbed. <laughs> yeah. And he's got every, we got six officers out there at least. They're going to, uh, 
And this guy tries the lock door. Uh, you think the body cam would take care of a lot of this? Because yes. you're like, I don't want this fucking on my Well, that's record. the funny part, is that the sheriff, this wasn't from the sheriff's body cam. It was from the cops that showed up to right. back him up. that own this place is... <laughs> okay. That's all I need. Yeah. All right, so appreciate you, man. Yep, no problem. I'm getting yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. All he wanted to give me was his first That's the, uh, the white male with the mustache? Yes. Okay. Yeah, he said he said he was, he felt um, yeah. threatened that somebody was going to do something to him. It's like stalk him or something. <laughs> it didn't help none. Burger King Vendetta. I would. No. Oh, man, that used to be my poor meal. <laughs> that was my go-to poor meal. Yeah, yeah. I worked. At a industrial park in Chatsworth, California, Tom Johnson's shop in the back, and there was a there was a Burger King on 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 like Devonshire or something. And every once in a while, they do the Dawson knows it. They 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 do the uh, big oh god Burger King big what was their burger was their big Whopper one? Whopper they do their ninety nine cent Whopper days. Oh man, ninety nine cent Whopper days when you're poor. You're making twelve bucks an hour, nine and two two whoppers, ninety nine cents each. That was a big day for Listen, me. Listen, I'm just gonna admit that I feel the the devil within me, the addiction bubbling up as you're talking about a nice warm burger. Oh, I'm telling you, it's you're right so about good. that. It's an addiction. I never do it. I I do almost zero fast food. But and me it's, too. Me too. But man. it's always there. It's always and it's there. always whispering. She's always there. She's your mistress. It's yeah. a siren song. <laughs> it is. She's calling you to the sea like a Crash sailor you into the rocks. Yeah, she wants to take you into a jetty. <laughs> mm-hmm. Next up, the Florida resident Lieutenant Dan recounts riding out his hurricane, the Hurricane Milton, recently in Tampa. Uh, on his sailboat. I'm not scared of anything. Uh, this guy kind of went viral last week. Uh, Joseph Malikowski, uh, Malinowski, I should say, a 54-year-old Tampa resident known locally as Lieutenant Dan. I guess he's got one leg, and he, oh, he weathered why. Hurricane Milton aboard his small sailboat in the Tampa Bay early on Thursday morning, despite the Category 3 uh, win. So he's a Lieutenant Dan because he's missing a leg. Exactly. You know, they just call him that. I guess right. that, that started because of the famous scene where in Forrest Gump where Lieutenant Dan is cussing God out on the very tip top, and then they just had a boatload of shrimp. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, yeah, he made it. He survived. Got slammed up against the uh, harbor wall a few times. But, you know, overall, it was a nothing burger. 99 oh, cent I'd rather, nothing burger. I'd like to have a nothing burger about now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Whoppers are charbroiled. I got That's it right, what I'm man. saying. Yeah, the taste. The mm. taste, that charbroiled. Something hit the back. You know, one time I had a charbroiled Impossible Burger. Mm. Yeah. I mm. went gay the whole day. Mm. They just outlawed uh, lab meat in Europe. What? I just heard that story today. No, but this one is like vegan, so they're going to outlaw Yeah, that. no, this is just the Impossible Burgers, just a bunch of soybean oil and crushed bean curd. And but they put shit. some kind of like the same protein that's in blood in the thing, so it tastes like real meat. That's the difference. I know. Well, how was it? It was good. Like, I was like shocked. It was like not a burger, but it tasted like a burger. But- I would do it if the Impossible Burger was better for you than a beef burger, but it's oh, not. It's not? No. See, I figured it was. Beef is really good for you, it turns out. We've just been talking shit about it. You know, meat is murder and all that kind of shit. But the reality is, is it's good for you. But I think, yeah, I agree. But, but I don't I think, know about I, I don't I don't I don't know about a Burger King patty. But no, I'm just no, saying, no. as opposed to a good burger, you know, higher grade. I just think the only bad beef. part is like red meat will get like. You get you see them rich guy diseases. Rich mm. guys get cancer. Gout. Yes, gout, mm. and like you get like Sc- colon cancer scurvy. because scurvy. Your butt is like handling so much red meat. It's not Hold supposed on. to do that. Have you ever given a TED talk on this? <laughs> I have. <laughs> Jason Mayhem Miller. <laughs> well, well, you get butt cancer. <laughs> Because uh, your asshole can't process the beef. The human asshole can only handle so much, folks. You know, when Bart Simpson says, don't have a cow, man, that's what he's saying. And when I fought Rampage, I, made, uh, I ate too much cow stuff. 
<laughs> and my butt couldn't process it. So now, here we are. So Lieutenant Dan made it through the hurricane unscathed. Tampa, shout out to you guys. I hope that you're okay. Because mostly everyone was. And uh, Hurricane Milton did not take out the electorate. Milton is not a good name for a hurricane. I mean, what's next? Hurricane Urkel? It's yeah. pretty bad. Mabel? Well, let, let me say this. You give a hurricane a name, right? But let's really drill down on the, the psychology of human beings and, and human nature, right? Okay. So, you give a name to, to, a, to a hurricane. And you do it so you can keep track of them. But you're constantly telling everyone to clear out. They're begging everyone, abandon your home, go to higher ground, do not do this. And their biggest problem is people don't listen and they get trapped and they get trapped in debris and next thing they're on the roof of their house and we got to rescue them, right? Or they die. If you gave your hurricane a name like Milton, <laughs> yeah. Then, so if you said, you know, hurricane, I'm just saying if somebody just said, there's a guy outside. You're in a bar. Yeah. And you go, there's a guy on the sidewalk who wants to fight. Well, sorry, there are two guys. There are two guys on the bar. And they, they, want, they want to fight, right? And one guy is named Milton, <laughs> and the other guy's name is Drake. Yeah. I'd be like, I'll take Milton. I don't, I haven't seen him. I don't know what their skill set is. Yeah. I, I, I'll just take Milton over Dutch or even Steve. It's just his name. I'll try Milton. I'll yeah. take a chance. Now, you could get burned. It could be Randy Couture out yeah, there, exactly, and you yeah. just picked a dude named Randy yeah. over a guy named Dave, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. But I'm saying if you want people to clear out, you need, oh, nose blown into town? Hurricane Adolf. Yeah. Totally. Clear it out. <laughs> if there are any, a lot of Jewish folk in the Florida area, yeah. Adolf's coming to town. <laughs> Cat Five bringing his friends. See, you clear right the fuck out. But they name him Stalin. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Stalin. but I Stalin. mean, we there got go. we got Pope Pot. We got Stalin. Yeah. We we got Vladimir. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hurricane Vlad's coming in. Yeah. Fuck it, pack it up. Yeah. Pack it. Milton's right. coming in. I think we could ride this one out. You see, how, see what I just did? Yep. That's the conversation. You're right. Can't give him a pussy name. <laughs> give him a fucking, give him a, oh yeah, Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. It's supposed to be a category four. It's coming, coming through town. Um, the disrespect, yeah. Yeah. A Genghis. <laughs> yeah. Hurricane Genghis is coming through, everybody. Yeah. Pack it up. Milton's coming through. Hurricane Ricky Martin's showing up. Yeah. Gonna kick not, back. No, hang back. Nah, not making good. a move. Hurricane. You got to give it a name that's going to get people to move. So we're all psychological. Absolutely right. Hey, next up, the mm. <laughs> new American millionaire class. Mm. You might like this plumbers mm. and HVAC mm. entrepreneurs. Mm. Yeah, private equity is pouring money into skilled trade small businesses. Good. Next thing you know, Fucking you're friendly. running an empire. Yeah, it's a big deal. There's money to be made in the blue-collar world, and you cannot be canceled. No. Once you're good, if you're a good plumber or a good electrician, yeah. you, will not, you will not be canceled. You can't be canceled. There's nothing you can say. You have a skill. If you can weld, lay a good bead of weld, plumb, frame, finish, swing a door, HVAC, whatever, there's going to be work. Yeah, you're right. And it and it's and it's. I, I, I've told you, I'm in Malibu now. They charge Malibu prices when they come out. You know, like I had a guy come to hook up a water filter. You know. And they just think I'm some pussy comedian, but they don't know I did this shit for a long time, you know? And the guy would be like, well, I'll put the water filter in and uh, it's going to be, I don't know, 1600 bucks or something, you yeah. know? And I go, and uh, what do we got in parts? Because I know it's a bunch of fucking 
elbows and a little yeah. copper sweat, sweating some half inch copper pipe and a nipple and a fucking LB. Well, that's electrician thing, but no one listening knows what the fuck I'm talking <laughs> about. Anyway. Yeah. And the guy's like, oh, it's going to be a hundred bucks in parts, which it, it wasn't. It's a couplers and fucking Y's and T's and sweeps and shit. And I'm not, not much, but anyway, it was a hundred bucks. And I'm like, all right, you, you doing it alone? Or you, is it a two manner? And he goes, no, no, I'm just, I'll do it myself. I go, well, what, what, how do you think, how long do you think the job's going to take? Oh, I, I'll get here at, you know, nine in the morning, probably half a day, probably be out of here by noon or one. I go, okay, all right, hold on. <laughs> 1600 bucks. Yeah, yeah. We're going to back out a hundred, which we're really going to back out $41, but all right, <laughs> exactly. we'll back out a hundred. Now we're at 1500 bucks <laughs> and you're going to be here alone under, you get 500 bucks an hour. <laughs> and the answer is, uh, yeah, I do from your Malibu white ass. Yeah, yeah. Like I, that's how it works. Yeah. I mean, you know, people go, oh, this guy's a plumber, or this guy's an electrician, or what have you. And they go, it's good money, man. He's making 46 bucks an hour plus golden time with the union or whatever. That guy's a plumber. He's making 75 bucks an hour, whatever that thing is. But when that guy comes to your house, yeah. if that guy's got his own business and he's an electrician, and you're like, I want to hook up the Tesla charger, so I need the 240, and I need to put it in the garage next to where I park the car. And the guy's like, all right, run some conduit and sweep it and blah, 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 pack it up, whatever. That guy's got 100 bucks worth of fucking conduit. Like, parts are cheap. Yeah, yeah. LBs and connectors and stuff. There's not much to it. Go down the fucking Home Depot. It's not that much money. And... That guy's going to be there for two and a half hours doing that, and he's charging you 1300 bucks. That guy's not making 50 bucks an hour. No. That guy's making uh, 475 bucks an hour. Yeah. So, yeah, good, good for people. And everyone in the trades is much saner than all the white-collar college people. They're not, they didn't get their it fucking strange, brain huh? eaten by COVID or anything. They're normal. It's strange that, like, yeah, they will – it's just now catching up kind of where like people who just push numbers around will get paid 10 times somebody who just actually does something for society. Pretty I've been weird. F- fucking screaming. Up. Well, first off, <laughs> like Wall Street, uh, like they just like push numbers and like all the money comes and they're just uh, making up money. Right. I guess. I don't know. I, I, I don't, don't even know, know how it works. Yeah. I don't know. Any of it works. <laughs> but the, I, I know I've been screaming about this subject for over 25 years. Ever since I started seeing all these commercials, I'm Sheryl Crow, and this is uh, for the music. We need to bring music back into kids and classrooms. And there was this whole big push in the mid-90s of the arts yeah, in school. School and the arts, music. And there was always, they do this fucking bullshit where they go, like, turns out kids who have mastered the oboe are three times more likely to go to college. Yeah, because they have parents who care. They bought them a fucking oboe, <laughs> and they practice something. Yeah. For three hours a day. Yeah. If you do that with anything, you'll be three times better at math yeah. than anybody else. It's all bullshit. We have to expose them to art. We have to expose them yeah. to music. It's not worth a fucking nickel once you get out of high school. Then I would yell, we need trades programs. Yeah, we need yeah, to yeah. bring back shop class. Yeah, yeah. Not fucking Cheryl Crow or the fucking oboe. We need shop class back in school. This is 1994, and everyone just look at me and go, what are you such a hater for? And I go, there's kids. They need a skill. They're not, they're, the oboe's not, they're not playing the oboe. And they go, whoa. I go, why don't we have shop class? Yeah. Because music opens their mind up. <laughs> yeah. I go, well, they don't have a skill. They yeah. need a job. No, no. Music makes them think better. Like, oh, shut the fuck up. Where is shop? Because or like computers or something, right? Like it needs to that be like, they did a little bit, little of, but bit, they but de- listen, no, I, they decided uh, everybody needed to go to college and then join the Philharmonic. <laughs> and me and Chris and Ray and all my jack off buddies from North Hollywood High, yeah. we just left high school completely skillless. <laughs> And yeah. we all wandered onto a job site and, and just started picking up garbage for a living. Yeah, they could have been. Yeah, they could have could had have been an apprentice. Plumber. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. I don't understand why they do that. And they try to teach old dogs new tricks. Well, who's running the schools? Yeah. Who's running the LA Unified? Yeah. I mean, the number one chick is just a fucking angry lesbian with no kids. What's her nose? The one with the bob cut who gets up there and screams about what they need more money. Weinstein. 
yeah, we have got wine garden. Wine garden. <laughs> that fucking old coos. I, you think she cares about shop class? And they all they're all just a bunch of angry chicks who are on a mission to fucking poison your brain about Hamas. Uh. Not teach you about shop. They don't give a fuck about shop. They want to teach you lesbian poetry. They don't want to teach you about shop. They're not interested in shop. Who's running the schools? Uh. A bunch of fucking cowards that shut down for two years because of COVID? You think those pussies care about shop? It's a bunch of henpecked yeah. homos and a bunch of crazy, angry fucking lesbians. Huh. That's who's running the schools, and they don't give two shits. If Mike Rowe was running yeah. schools, then we'd have shop. Oh. If Adam Carolla was running schools, then we'd have shop. But the only way to change that would be for to have those pe- type of people on the school board. But those type of people, they didn't take liberal arts degree and go into. No, and yeah. we're working. Everybody's <laughs> exactly. working. Yeah, those yeah. guys have jobs. Yeah. Plumbers and electricians and normal people have jobs. So the the agenda is set by the people who are average age, 27 Average sex, female, and average party affiliation, progressive Democrat. Uh, they don't like blue collar so people. Just, they have disdain for blue collar people. Then you people. just flunk out of there, go to prison, and then you learn to be a plumber. Then, in then they want to. They, then they want to help you. Uh, I Once see. you're in prison, then they have apathy for it. But it's a bunch of. Listen. I've said it a million times. If the school was just run by vegans, how fast would they get rid of meatloaf? Yeah, yeah. They can't help uh, themselves. Have you ever met a progressive 27-year-old single woman who was into wood shop, metal no, shop, no. lays, table yeah. saws, chop saws? A cut. rare Venn diagram. No, yeah. doesn't, doesn't exist. So the re- they've weeded out the shop guy because the shop teacher was the white dude who liked Charlton Heston <laughs> Yeah. And was an NRA member, and they fucking sent that guy packing a long time ago. I never considered this. Right. So that's that's why it's been vetted out, and that's where Sheryl Crow and the music part comes in. Well, Ugh, but you're going to like this. Idiots. You're going to like this, then. Right. Uh, billionaires back a uh, new anti-woke university. Mm. Yeah, Jeff Yass and Harlan Crow are among donors. I'm going to teach Woodshop there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Billionaires frustrated, frustrated Excuse me. with elite colleges are banding behind a fledgling school in Texas that boasts 92 students. Mm-hmm. So apparently, yeah, it's um, a major GOP donor, Crow, uh, was an early backer. Much of the Ed today seems to want to reject Western accomplishments and the accomplishments most of, of educa- Western. Well, uh, most, most of education today? Yeah, that's what he says. Yeah, right. higher ed, yeah. It's uh-huh. like um, he's saying that they're, you know. Yeah. Now listen. Yeah. I've said it a million times. Safe spaces and octagons. Yeah. The normal people who just miss this country and tired of the fucking loonies running everything will just – Move to an octagon. Well, we're not, there's no longer going to be people coexisting at Stanford and Berkeley and Harvard. It's going to be that's a bunch of Hamas supporting left wing lunatics. I don't want my fucking kid to go there and get his brain poisoned for 85 grand a semester. I'm going, we'll start our own school. We're going somewhere else. Mm. That's, that's what it is. That's what Florida is. Like, so where, where does this chaos end, though? Because you know when is what's gonna what's gonna bring the country to homeostasis? You know I'm not very good at politics, but I don't understand like how we're gonna get back to where everybody can just coexist. And it's looking like there's some type of trouble on the horizon right now. <laughs> <laughs> the lunatics on the left who've created the lunatics on the right are going to have to tack back towards sanity. Yeah. And once they get back towards sanity, then we'll be normal. (laughs) But as long as you guys want sanctuary cities and drag queen story hour, then it's not going to, there'll be no sanity anymore. You got to get a little normal. You got to be a Democrat that I come from, like kind of those mid '90s Democrats, you yeah. know, you have to be a kind of Bill Clinton Democrat, where you go, look, uh, abortion should be safe and it should be legal, but it should be rare. 
Yeah, you know, we go. I, we don't like abortion, but w- w- it should be legal. Yeah. But we're not going to celebrate it. You know what I mean? They just got to tack back, and then once they tack back, then the lunatic right will put their, they'll turn their uh, weapons into plowshares or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll yeah. bury the tomahawk or the hatchet, and they'll just put all that stuff. Yeah, I just want well. I just want everyone to settle down. It won't settle down. Look. I'll give you an example. If you guys wanted to be halfway normal during COVID, then this would have been fine. If your policy is take an experimental vaccination, otherwise we're going to fire you from your job, then no. And if your thing is going to be shut schools down for two weeks and see what happens, the answer is yes. If you say shut schools down for two years, then the answer is no. And if you say We're not going to allow rave parties to go on in underground clubs. I'll go, yes. But then when you say, I want to shut down the beaches, I'll go, no. So if you want to be normal, we can go along with this. If you want to be insane, then fuck you. We're going to the octagon. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's how this ends. I know it's a weird thing. Like, you're basically like going, when does the fighting with your wife end? And you go, when that bitch stops being crazy. (laughs) Which sounds... Like it's Sounds on you, abusive, yeah. But if she really is crazy, I know. Then it would end when she stopped. Yeah, it just seems like both sides are so far extreme, and they're listening to their own Facebook bubbles. That mm. I don't know, and I'm like out of it. I feel like a nihilist these days. Mm. Like I don't even. What does it matter to me? I'm just yeah. some guy, just some punchy prize fighter that's just doing his thing, just floating through the world. Well, well you don't have kids, right? Exactly. Yeah, then you can really just check I'm out. I'm good. Yeah, yeah I'm you're good. Out. Yeah, I'm fine. You guys, fight amongst yourselves. I'm cracking up. Call me a communist. I'm just uh, living, uh, spread it around a little bit. Are you done with the news stories? Is nah, we have, uh, the last one, you might like this too, All right. is a top Oregon official put on leave for allegedly priori- prioritizing qualified job candidates over gender identity. Oh. So. Uh-oh. Yeah, exactly. Somebody's, somebody's taking qualified people <laughs> exactly. over race and it's gender. It's insane, yeah. Uh-oh. A DEI expert and her fir- former boss is placed on administrative leave for reportedly prioritizing merit over personal identity uh, when uh, hiring new employees. So someone's merit-based. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. a big issue. Uh, Megan Doniker, who uh-huh. formerly served as Oregon Department of Forestry's DEI strategy officer, complained about the agency's management, criticizing her boss, Mike Shaw, for looking beyond gender and identity in hiring, seeking only candidates the most qualified for the job. How bizarre would it be possible for every big organization, every governmental organization, every Fortune 500 company to hire a DEI officer without them finding cases all over the warehouse and all over the military and all over the Department of Federal Lands? Like, your job, you just— hired a truffle sniffing pig to work at your fucking organizations and truffles they shall find because if the truffle sniffing pig is just sitting in their fucking office and you're paying them three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a year yeah at some point i go um has arnold found any truffles arnold is the only famous pig does anyone know you know that yeah yeah, of course dawson no, I'm aware of Babe. Oh, Babe! Oh, Babe's a more one. more recent. Yeah, yeah. Arnold is the only s- famous sitcom pick. Green Sorry. Acres. Green Acres. Shout out. Green Acres. Arnold was the name of the pick. <laughs> but if I'm paying Arnold three hundred seventy-five thousand bucks a year, and I check into his office and I go, Arnold, find any truffles? They're like, Nope. It's been a while, but nope. Eventually, I'll go, well, why do I have to pay this guy 376 bucks a year, and he never finds any truffles? So Arnold will find truffles, and whoever you hire will find racism. Yeah. No matter, They'll find it somewhere. Yeah. And then we'll have a problem with racism. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah, the residents are pushing back here in uh, Clackamas County, Oregon. And announced January will dismantle their nearly 830000 a year diversity, equity, and inclusion, inclusion office. Oh, how much fucking money do we spend on expense? this? Yeah. Uh, well, the good news is 
the people like in Oregon and the people in Washington who are like way out ahead of us, it's even happening in Canada in the fucking nutty cuckoo land, left progressive thing. Yeah. They're starting to rethink their sanctuary cities and their defund the cops and their DEI stuff. They're, they're now seeing the results yeah. of all that. Yeah. And they're going, whoa, ho, ho, we got to go back toward the middle where I said we could meet, but we can't as long as there's a bunch of people who are trying to do this shit. It seems like their heart's in the right place. They, they want everybody to have a nice experience, but the reality of the situation is it doesn't really work out that way. I Their heart I'm not so sure their heart is in the right place anymore. I used to say that. But if their heart being in the right place means you get stabbed in the heart by a homeless guy yeah, when you're yeah. walking through downtown Portland, then who gives a fuck where their heart yeah, is? You're right. You still yeah. got a fucking machete in yours. I, I kind of get it. If you listen to enough black ladies tell you that you're a bad person, you feel bad. And then you push back and try to, or if you watch a translator do the symbols to, that makes you feel bad about being white, you might go, oh, I need to overcorrect. But then you're overcorrecting right into the ditch. Mm. And then you're paying hundred, I mean, $830,000 to make sure that there are not just white people working here when most of the population in Oregon is white. Do you remember Arnold's last name from Green Acre? No. <laughs> Damn. I'm going to give you a hint. You remember Mr. Ziffel? <laughs> no. Sorry. You know, you know Arnold, but you don't know Mr. Ziffel. <laughs> Listen, just so you know, I was like four when I watched that show. But you knew Arnold. I knew, of course, because Arnold was a pig, and I was a little kid, so it's like really spoke to me. I also knew Mr. Ed on a first name basis. Uh, find me, <laughs> Dawson. You got to find me twenty five seconds <laughs> of Mr. Haney talking. And when I find you 25 seconds of Mr. Haney talking, and I brought this up before, but it bears repeating. When I find you 25 seconds of Mr. Haney from Green Acres talking. I remember this, yeah. I need you to close your eyes, right. even if you're driving. And I need you to picture Ted Cruz <laughs> in your head when you hear. Just close your eyes, Mayhem. Let's right, see. Here Let's I go. Let's try it. But you need to if you need anything for picture the house, Ted Cruz. I won't. You might. <laughs> All it said was, I sold you a house. And that's what you got, a house. <laughs> it's just what you need. Well, it so happens that I'm planting tomatoes. Mr. Douglas, you just had another lucky day. <laughs> picture Ted Cruz. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, uh, he's questioning someone in Congress. That's that was it. That's he's got the voice of he Mr. Does. Haney. Very good uh, Ted Cruz vibes there. You're Thank right. you.